Welcome back to Conference USA Media Day. We're coming to you live from the Baylor Scott and White per, uh, Sports Performance Center in Frisco, Texas, right across the street, by the way, from the Dallas Cowboys headquarters and their practice facility. We move on now to the Rice Owls and the newest addition of the head coaching staffs here in Conference USA, Mike Bloomkin. Mike, good to have you with us, my friend. Thanks so much. We, and we're going to be talking to him in just a second. First, we also have a couple of players here. Gentlemen, had a workout this morning, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll be talking about that. I want to get the coach first, though. You and I were just chatting about taking over this program. You came from Stanford. You know the academic sta standards at Stanford, basically the same at Rice. Were you surprised how hard the guys worked, though, and, and what you were taking over when you came to Rice? Not at all. I think that's what you get when you get a Stanford kid or a Rice kid. You get guys that are self-starters, guys that want to grind. Because we ask them to do more to get into school in the first place. We ask them to keep competing in the classroom just like we ask them to compete on the field. So, no, I'm not surprised at all. Love these kids, and they're exactly what I hope they'd be. You know, this morning, before you even made the way up from Houston, you guys worked out. Yes, sir. That, that kind of tells you a little bit something. Uh, Coach, talk about the fact that they had to work out, then you have to come up here. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of days off in our summer right now. You know, we're getting after it pretty good. Uh, the guy on the screen right now is our strength and conditioning coach, Hans Straub, and he's a guy we brought in from Stanford. Well, wait a minute. Was that was Sam? You weren't losing it there, were you, buddy? No, no, no. Oh, okay, just want to make sure. Go ahead, Coach. No, he wasn't. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Hans, you know, the strength coach is such an important hire in this day and age, you know, to a guy that touches your players more than anybody else on your staff. And he's done such a good job advancing our culture and getting those guys in, in the shape we need to be in to start camp in a week and a day. And, you know, we're a run-to-win program, as you see right there. Zach leading that pack. That's pretty good. Zach Abercrombie is joining us. He's the starting defensive tackle. Sam Pierce also starting offensive tackle joins us. I want to talk about the direction of this team. Um, you have run different types of offenses. You've been, been in the NFL, obviously, at Stanford for over seven years. What type of offense are you going to run here at Rice? Yeah, you're exactly right. We've been a part of many different offenses over time, from four wides at Delta State to go into the NFL and then at Stanford where we're kind of going to do that model. It's one I've seen work at every level of football I've been at, and that's pound the rock, control the clock, and play great defense. Are they having to learn a pro-style offense on the fly? 100% they are. They're learning West Coast terminology with a power run game, and they're learning the techniques that we used in the National Football League. You lose Dreyfus Jackson, who was the starting quarterback last year. Give us an update on the quarterback situation. The quarterback situation is, is going very well. You know, the leader in the clubhouse right now is Jackson Tyner. He came out and did a great job for us this spring. He's got unbelievable arm talent. We have a grad transfer coming in from Vanderbilt. Sean Savage. Yeah, Sean's a great, talented kid, and I think he's doing really well fitting in. And then the thing we can't lose sight of is getting a, a healthy Sam Glaceman back. You know, right. he's a competitor. He's a guy that earned some starting roles last year, and so we know he's going to compete. And so having those three guys uh, makes me pretty excited. And you still have Aaron Cephas, a wide receiver, tall guy, led the FBS in yards per reception, Conference USA all-freshman team. The expectations for him, obviously, this season are high. How have you challenged him? We've just challenged him to understand that we think we'll be able to run the ball well enough to get post safety. Right. Now, you got to win that one-on-one -on -one for us out there on the edge, big fella. And that's, that's always the challenge for your ex-receiver. And to have a guy like him that's had that success before, it's pretty exciting. You talked about running the ball, and, and I look at your team. Are you going to have to run the ball to shorten the game? I don't know that we have to. It's just a philosophical belief. We okay. want to pound the rock. We want to impose our will in every phase of the game. You know, it's something that we talk about with intellectual brutality, and it's something that's right. at the heart and soul of everything we're doing. You know, we want to be smart. We want to go to the line of scrimmage with multiple plays and have answers, and then we want to be that physical team that nobody wants to play. Now, I, when I was talking to people about your spring game, the name Emmanuel Supa kept coming up. I called him a bruiser. How do you describe him, and where is he going to play? So he's going to play that halfback role for us. But you can put him in a slot. I mean, he can move around, can't he? Soup has some flexibility. We just love him dotting the eye back there right now mm -hmm. and being the guy behind the quarterback. You know, 5'11 and a half, 232 pounds, and running a 4'5", 40, he's, he's a rarity. And a uh, guy that runs downhill well and sees it and has the ability to finish. Sam Pierce, I want to talk to you. 13 consecutive starts. What is the atmosphere here like? Because I've been in this business long enough that when there are transitions – you know, you have to go through this honeymoon period and all that, but what has it been like right now? Uh, just really exciting more than anything. I mean, obviously when there's some new stuff going on, we had some a little learning curve, had to figure out what was going on with the new coaches, um, you know, new systems, all that stuff. But more than anything, we know that we're a new football team this year. Um, we're going to be aggressive, we're going to be physical, and we're excited to play. How disappointing is it to go through what you went through last season? Uh, extremely disappointing. It's it's really hard to do, but at the same time, 
you know, we learned a lot about ourselves. We're not quitters. We didn't stop working. Um, we still showed up to work every day. And uh, it's fresh on our minds. We're ready to fix it this year. This is sometimes a sore subject. And, Coach, you may want to address this too. But having done the Pac-12 and, and uh, Stanford, I remember talking to Jeff Tedford when he was there, a number of coaches at Stanford. Everybody goes, well, they're the smart guys. They're not real football players. What's your answer to that? Well, we're smart and we can play football too. <laughs> What's your major, by the way? Uh, sport management and business. Okay, it's usually the man. How about yours? Uh, sport management with a minor in business. Okay, so you guys, I'll be working for you one day is what you're trying to <laughs> tell me, correct? Yeah. And see, I don't buy that philosophy when people say that. No, I don't either. You know, because I've seen it. I've seen Stanford be very successful, obviously. I'm sure somebody would tell John Elway, you're just a smart guy. You can't play because he went to Stanford, right? Yeah, John Elway spoke to our team before we played in the Pac-12 championship a few years back. And that's exactly what he said. You know, he said, make sure you tell those guys on the field that they'll be working for you someday. So <laughs> that's exactly right. That. Yeah. That's exactly right. Now, the one thing you do understand, you, di you understand the dynamics of coaching at a school with a higher education standard, correct? Yes, sir. And what's that like? It's awesome because you get to work with this caliber of student athlete. You get to recruit that caliber of student athlete. And I love recruiting to that model. I love recruiting guys that want to push themselves and, and to try to attain excellence in every field. Mm -hmm. I think that the fact that we can sell a true student athlete model and have the ability to major in whatever you choose at the great university that we work at and, and play at, I think is outstanding. I think there's five places in America where you can play big time college football mm -hmm. and get a world class degree. And that's Stanford, Northwestern, Rice, Vanderbilt and Duke. There you go. And we're very happy to be in that company. Zach, when I was talking to people about the spring game and, and everything since the coaching change, the word that kept coming up when we talked about you was a player that practices on fire and you're on, on fire and you're becoming a leader. Was that something that you consciously wanted to accomplish this season? Yes, sir. Uh, I think, you know, when you have a season like we had last year, you, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to take a, a, a really deep look in the mirror. And, um, you know, besides the, you know, wanting to pat yourself on the back, you, you have to be real about, areas of your game that you can improve and um you know one thing that you know was told to me one thing that i saw myself was you know conditioning was a, was a thing that i could always improve on could always get better at because it, it's always great to to you know have tackles have sacks but it, it's even better to be on the t be on the field for your team and be there when they need you and so uh and so yeah so i i uh was really focusing on conditioning and that was one thing that my coach told me was to, was to focus on practicing on fire, practicing like I want to play. And, uh, you know, that's what I did this uh, this spring and, and this summer. I just took it to another level. As you're watching the workout, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Man, hey. I want you on my tug head, of rope team. Yeah, I know hey, that. I, you know? Hey, I'm saying that head was shiny right there. That's, <laughs> when you know, that's when you know I'm getting that work in. That head, that head shining, looking like a milk dud. That's when you know. It, that's when you know it's going on. But the, the one thing, and I, I don't mean to be the negative Nelly here, but your defense had only three interceptions last season. Is that up on a board somewhere that we can't have that this year? We've got to get more than three. I want you to address it first. I uh, yeah. I mean, you know. Um, one thing that uh, that has really been a big thing this this spring and this off season is unity, and um, through unity uh, we can have real conversations with our brothers and, and let them know mm -hmm. what I what our expectations are for this year. And uh, and opposed to having three interceptions, we also have to give more pressure on that quarterback. We also have to do our job up front so that those you know interceptions go their way, so that those overthrows come their way, so that those tip passes come their way from us putting so much pressure on the quarterback. So it's not just about the, the defensive backs or the linebackers. It's about all of us working together as one and uh, coming together for a greater purpose. And, uh, you know, that's the advancement of our team as a, as a program. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people go, why don't you get more interceptions? But there's so much that goes into it, pressure, scheme, player personnel, the whole nine yards. How do you look at that? Well, I think you're exactly right. I think rushing coverage work together. They are hand in hand, and they cause those turnovers together. And I think anybody that just talks about a corner is, is foolish. But mm -hmm. I think also when you talk about where we are as a team, I, they were ranked 128th in, in turnover margin mm -hmm. last year. So we also have to protect the ball better as an offense. And we've addressed that. We've talked about how important that ball is to us. And I think our special teams coordinator, Pete Lumbo, has done a phenomenal job educating our football team on the value of the ball.
Yeah, the one thing I want to talk about before I let you go, Brian Smith comes from Michigan defensive coordinator. He relied a lot on strong man-to-man -man coverage in his career when you look back at it. Is he going to run a 3-4 base, or is he going to have five defensive backs? What's your defense going to be this year? So he is a 3-4 <laughs> base if you say, what is our base defense? Okay. But you look around Conference USA, and we're going to be in the nickel 24 and nickel 33 <laughs> with a Viper safety down more often than not. Mm -hmm. And we're going <laughs> to stop the run. That's where everything's going to start with Brian, and he's going to play a very physical style. But we are going to get after the quarterback anytime they want to throw it. And that's his style, though. That's his style. That's just, absolutely just who he get is. after it. Now, I have to. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact you you uh, had a passing away. Blaine Paget, defensive end, passed away. How did that affect the team? And it happened in March. But how has that affected the team? You know what? It's made these guys even closer, and it's given us all something to work towards. We uh, we've gotten used to a new normal. We miss Blaine every day, and we're working for him, and we're trying to make him proud of the way we're working. Something I noticed in my short time with Blaine was he loved this game. And any time he was at practice or at a workout, he was on. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that's what we can do. We can always have our focus in the right place for Blaine and uh, enjoy every moment that we have together in his honor. I got about 30 seconds. Your feelings on that? Uh, yeah, just like Coach said, I, uh, you know, I, I talked about that this a little earlier today. But, you know, Blaine was a guy who he had a true – not only passion but love for all of his teammates, coaches, and this game. And so one thing that uh, we're going to try to do as a, as a team and as a, uh, a defense and a, a defensive line is to honor his memory and showing up to work every day with the same attitude that he put in for the <coughs> three years that he was at Rice. Sam, your, your feelings on that? Yeah, I mean, same as Crum. I mean, Blaine is still with us every day. Every, every tough rep you have in the weight room, every run that you don't think you can make, uh, you just look up and think, would Blaine have made it? Would Blaine have been able to hit it? And you know he would have. So it's very helpful to, to have a guardian angel like that looking over you. And gentlemen, I know that was a very tough situation for you, but I wanted to address it because a lot of people still talk about it. But I wish you the very best. New beginnings. New beginnings, New beginnings yes, for you yes, guys, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in September. Coach, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's go. Well, I'm ready to go. We'll continue <laughs> our coverage of Conference USA Media Day. Coming up next, Southern Miss. Stay with us.